chronic ailments like diabetes, hypertension, asthma, eating disorders and many of these kinds which are all essentially generated from within. All these things can be quelled from within if only we are willing to pay a certain level of attention to the innermost dimension of who we are. Inner engineering is a powerful process of approaching the inner core of who you are in a scientific manner and this is definitely a way to create a healthful life. Up until Shambhavi in January 2021, I've just been living with pain in the body. The first result I'd like to point out about Shambhavi Kriya is that it's had a tremendous effect on my physical well-being. Somehow, some way, I don't know the science behind it, but it's keeping me free of pain. Being able to sit uh, without noticing my body for long, long periods of time, that has just had tremendous impact on my mental and emotional stability. Recently, these papers have been published, maybe you already read it. A certain group of scientists and doctors in United States, from Indiana University, some from Harvard University and Florida, they studied people who've been practicing inner engineering. The genetic tendencies are changing simply with the inner engineering practices. So, they recorded all these things, the biomarkers and everything. One thing that determines the nature of your experience and your mental and emotional condition is what is called as BDNF, that is brain-derived neurotropic factors. So the BDNF is higher in a positive way, threefold in ninety days. That means keeping your emotions in balance, keeping in a good state of experience and sharpness of mind and pleasantness of experience shouldn't even be a problem. There is another dimension. You know what is a cannabinoid? In India it is known as ganja or uh, everywhere else it's known as marijuana. In different places, it's known by different names. But essentially, these are plant extracts which have a certain influence on the mood and experience of the person. But there are millions of cannabis receptors, both in your brain and across the body. Because you are supposed to produce it, you're not supposed to smoke it. So now, with the inner engineering practices, it's clearly, the biomarkers clearly establish that your endocannabinoid production is significantly higher. That means you are stoned by yourself, you don't need any outside help. But the impact of the endocannabinoids compared to the cannabinoids that come from outside are very, very different. It makes you intoxicated and super alert at the same time because along with it, certain other secretions happen. I took inner engineering, like I said, this is a yoga class, so it's not like a place where you go to quit smoking, that's not what it's designed for. But because of taking this class, after a week, I completely stopped smoking. That's after at least 20 years of smoking, a pack a day, I just quit in a week. And then I quit smoking marijuana a week later. I started smoking marijuana when I started smoking cigarettes. Then anti-anxiety pills, gone within the month. I stopped drinking, I stopped smoking, I stopped doing all the drugs. They were all gone, which is amazing. And it was, it, it happened so effortlessly when I look back. And I didn't go to this class to quit those things.
genes which are fundamentally responsible for your immune system are also highly enhanced. So from the laboratories in America, from the top universities in America, it's coming that clearly they're saying 220 genes which activate your immune system, they're all elevated because of the practice. You didn't drop from heaven, as some people believe. You evolved the qualities of an amoeba, an earthworm, a grasshopper, a buffalo, every kind of beast that evolution went through. Elements of those qualities are still with you. So, these are all compulsive tendencies. The evolutionary process the modern neurology recognizes that there is a part of your brain which is reptilian, which is approximately the size of your fist. That means it's at that stage of development, which is instinctive and does things in a certain way. But over that, a flower of cerebral cortex evolved. Which is a happening which happened after human spine became erect. Which is what makes you human? which is what gives you thoughts about universality of the existence, which is what gives you an idea that everything is one, which is what allows you to be a scientist, this is what allows you to be a spiritual seeker. But if you go back to this, all you have is instincts of survival. So the entire process, the human effort, through education, through spiritual process, through meditation, everything is to move away from this and function from the outer dimension, which is a more recent happening, but this gives you a sense of seamless way of approaching life. If you go to the reptilian brain of who you are, Fixing boundaries is all that you know. So whenever you are uh, having problems with people around you, always wanting to fix your boundaries, this is mine, this is yours, my space, your space, my air, your air. <laughs> when it comes, you must know you gotten here. Now the spiritual process, the yogic dimension is looking at how to make this, because if you function only from one aspect of your brain, it'll work, but not enough, you're not using all of it. There is evidence to show that the reptilian brain can become more transparent and starts communicating with the outside part of the brain. There are experiments, there are studies which show that with certain practices of meditativeness, reptilian brain which is always about fixing boundaries will begin to communicate with the outer part of the cerebral cortex and it function as one brain. So I don't know if you... Uh, <laughs> you should, the flower should open up and that is why you will see all the imagery in the yogic culture, flower, flower, small flower, small flower, small flower, big flower. <laughs> it opened up. If it opens up, now human intelligence is functioning in a very unifying way, not in a divisive way, not in a way that you will become exclusive, you will become inclusive. Inclusiveness is not a philosophy. Inclusiveness is the nature of the existence. No other creature is able to realize this. They're all busy fixing boundaries. The dog is peeing all over the place, not because of urinary problems, but 
he's establishing a kingdom, pea kingdom of course. <laughs> Human beings are not any different, they're doing the same things in a different way. This is mine, that is mine, that is mine, that is mine. Fixing a kingdom, when it's possible, push it a little bit. When it's possible, push it a little bit, not possible, put the wall. Happening all the time. So, something that I particularly noticed is how comfortable I am within myself. Uh, my insecurities seem to have reduced a lot. Uh, my relationship with others also had improved significantly. I think I became more inclusive um, than what I was before. Shambhavi Mahamudra, just a simple practice for twenty-one minutes increases brain function and neuronal regeneration. This means as you grow old, you will become more intelligent. Usually young people think you're getting stupid. Yes, your brain is actually growing, you understand? It's getting better by the day. Now there is scientific evidence, we al always knew this, but today a meter has to say it. If a man says it, it's not true. If a man says it, it's doubtful. But a meter has to say it, now the meters are saying it. The meters are saying your brain is actually growing by doing a simple twenty-one mini minute practice. And you don't believe the meter, you just do the practice for three months and see, you will see how clear and how smart your mind is suddenly.